Hello, I'm Pastor Dave Denoon of the First Congregational Church of Webster Groves, United Church of Christ, and these are your weekend announcements for Saturday, January the 9th, 2021. No sooner, it seemed, had I expressed my welcome to the new year in the signboards than it became clear I was premature. Wednesday's waking nightmare brought us all up to the reality that we must remain vigilant in our common cause of democracy. I hope that it also brought many more of us to understand the striking contrast between how law enforcement responds to white people and how it responds to people of color. How many rhetorical questions have I heard over the last few days that began with the phrase, if those had been Black Lives Matter protesters? As I remember the Black Lives Matter protests in the wake of the death of George Floyd and Breonna Taylor just a few months ago, I have to say that I don't think that they or any people of color generally would ever embrace the measure of privilege that those white seditionists did storming the capital of the United States, even at the behest of the president. Unless you think that protesters demanding social justice would only hesitate to do so because they did not presume privilege, allow me to suggest that it might just be that yes. social justice advocates, true civil rights activists who emerge for a great part from um, religious conviction, consider certain places sacred, whether their assumption is warranted or not. And they recognize that they ought to exercise a measure of humility towards the people's house and the government, which they and their fellow citizens have elected. Now, if you object to what I'm saying, if you doubt me, you might reply that many of those who overran the officers at the Capitol did so out of their own religious convictions. But that will then lead us into a discussion and possibly reverential reference to white Jesus. And last week I tried to state as clearly as possible that this latter-day Jesus with his European complexion is no one to whom I will ever again bear homage. And I think that you should not either. And furthermore, that those who do ought to learn a measure of shame rather than the pride that they pretty clearly are practicing and expressing right now. It's an embarrassment for me as a Christian to claim the same Savior as they do, at least by name. My own sense of mercy says, however, that they need to learn Brown Jesus from us, even as we learn that one as well. If there was ever a call to evangelize, if there is ever a call to convert the world in the name of Christ, it is the call upon us to pronounce the good news of the victory of our God through a spirit of holiness and the example of Jesus of Nazareth. Worship for this week will be offered starting late in the day today on YouTube and then tomorrow, Sunday, at 10 in the morning as a Zoom watch party. Tune in early for a special treat. Music director Leon Burke III, through his many connections musically in the area, discovered an Oberlin Conservatory student, violinist Charlie Hamilton, who needed a space in which to record an audition for a program he's wanting to participate in. Well, Leon offered the sanctuary, and the result is an 18-minute long prelude <laughs> to tomorrow's worship service. Charlie will play the solo portions of the first movement of Tchaikovsky's Violin Concerto in D Major. I kid you not. The video quality? Not the best, and the recorded sound is sometimes overwhelmed by Charlie's virtuosity, but wow! <laughs> what a musician, and seriously, what an athlete. I encourage you to arrive at our Zoom meeting at least 15 minutes early on Sunday, January the 10th. I will then begin playing the recording at that time. It'll stretch a little past the hour, so even if you show up late for the beginning of the performance, you'll still be on time. Charlie also recorded the Bach 
Sonata for solo violin in A minor, Beve Fau 1003, fourth allegro movement, and we've included that as our postlude. In between, Leon and I will <laughs> sing the hymn Crashing Waters at Creation, and uh, Leon will sing What Ruler Wades Through Murky Streams for our anthem. Virtual Coffee Fellowship follows worship at 11 o'clock at a different Zoom link and ID than the one you use for worship, so see the announcements below for that information. Now, as I indicated at the beginning, this week has been one for prayer. I thank the four of you who joined me for prayer on Wednesday afternoon as the events of that day were unfolding, and remind all of you that at 3 o'clock in the afternoon each Wednesday we gather for prayer uh, in order to be able to compose our prayer list for Sunday mornings, but also in order to be able to have some time together in a, oh, a meditative and reflective way. I hope that some of you were able to join Webster University Chaplain Laurel Hayes on Friday evening for her 6 o'clock prayer vigil for the nation. I'm sorry I wasn't able to be there because of family obligations. On Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock, the Ethical Society of St. Louis and Interfaith Partnership will host a virtual gathering they are calling Interfaith Vigil for Democracy. That Zoom ID is in the printed announcements below. Keeping with the Interfaith Partnership announcement, that organization is also hosting a lecture series by the Reverend Dr. David Greenhaw, past president of Eden Seminary, on Wednesdays at 7 o'clock p.m. starting January 26th through March the 30th. His title is Practicing Religion. Dr. Greenhaw will explore practices of the world's religions which bind us in a common humanity. Bear in mind that next Sunday, the 17th, is the weekend of the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Worship will center on themes of justice and freedom, of course, and I will begin a new three-part series about how Jesus draws us to God. Is God irresistible? I'm asking. Also, and I'll note that this is your very own exclusive piece of information, I am working with some others on the creation of a video celebration for next Sunday evening when we would ordinarily be gathering for the March dinner and program of our community's annual celebration of the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I hope to have a formal announcement about it for you by next Tuesday, that's to say in just a few days. On the 24th, you will be introduced to our newest staff member, Pastoral Assistant Hallie Kim. Hallie will lead our Christian education programs for young people, assist me with pastoral care and confirmation, which, yes, parents, is coming soon, and take part in the planning, leading, and producing of our worship services. There will be more about Hallie in upcoming editions of our E! News and Covenant News, and she actually begins work with us on January, well, we're thinking January 25th. That has to be finalized, but that's, that's our target. January 31st will be the 155th anniversary of the establishment of the First Congregational Church of Webster Groves, and we will do it in grand style, I assure you, including a revised slideshow on the life of Jenny Davis Sharp. Do you not know who Jenny Davis Sharp was? Well, you will soon enough. I think that that's uh, enough for this week's announcements. Until we worship together next, keep the faith, love one another, and peace be upon you.